So what we're going to attempt to do next week is um, spray two-part epoxy and or chassis block on the bottom of the full floor assembly from Dynacorn before we invert it onto the body cart. Because once we invert it onto the body cart and begin building off of that platform, it would be very difficult for us to get back underneath the car. Um, so just as a way of trying to avoid any of those steps later or lessen the number of steps later with a full car, since the car is in sections now, we're taking advantage of that by spraying it with that undercoating before it even gets put together. So to that end, we have purchased a Vivor 13 by 10 by 9 spray booth, as well as a Vivor uh, exhaust fan and tube. Now, I'm not certain how the exhaust fan actually uh, integrates into a booth. It's normally just listed for um, ventilation of space, but certainly somebody has worked up a way to be able to introduce clean, filtered air into the spray booth with the ventilation fan. Let's open this box up and see what's inside. Oh, instructions. We have instructions. We have a picture. What that's supposed to look like. We have a big blue bag. And we have a box. So let's see what's in this box over to the side. Before we open the blue bag. Okay, so this is the inflation fan. Pat patent of double sided wind wheel. Wind wheel. Strong wind energy savings. Strong wind. Okay. Oh, and some more instructions. It should be anti-moist, dust, erosion, and shake. Use temperature should less than 50 degrees C. Okay. Should connected with ground electrode before using the voltage and frequency should same as nameplate. Nameplate voltage except 10% difference. Three phase wire connect according to wire box wire diagram. Uh -huh. Single phase wire, make it out. Single phase wire, make it out. In normal voltage, blower will start after power on in seconds. If not start or turn slowly or unnormal exothermic, it should cut off power and check immediately. It might actually mean me, you, you should. Voltage is low, lose low phase or lead lead connection not good. Machine has fault, such as fan blade is loosed or moved. Lube in bearing inside is hardened or not clear. Okay, so yeah. Single phase lose a a fist a e f f i c a c y. Efficiency? It can continue use after remedying faults. Use only a three wire extension cord that has a three blade grounding wire. And this is obviously written by someone who translated the rest. And the three slot receptacle that accepts the plug in the product, make sure your extension cord is not damaged. When using an extension cord, be used, sure to use heavy one heavy enough to carry the current your product draws. For lengths less than 25 feet, 18, gauge extension cord shall be used. An undersized cord could result in a drop line, drop in line voltage 
and loss of power and overheating. But that part was clearly written in the United States. The product must be grounded, improper installation. The grounding plug is able to resolve. Okay, so yeah, it's okay. No problem. We have all of that. No problems there. We have all of that. Okay, so let us see the wind fan, the wind wheel. Excuse me, it's not a fan, it's a wind wheel. It's not a blower. It is a wind wheel. If you have not experienced ownership of a wind wheel, you can experience it through me. Wind wheel, air blower. Okay. Oh, it's very colorful. Packers colors. People in Wisconsin will be extremely excited to see that they don't have to change any part of their theming at their house if they buy this product. Okay, stakes for staking down the big blow up bounce house. Ooh, it even has a handle. Okay, this is, seems fairly nice. So we have a plug, we have a switch, which has got some type of weatherizing on it. We have a handle, we have the wind wheel, wind wheel, and we have the business end of the wind wheel. All right, so let's put this over here. We are definitely gonna need a three-prong extension cord, which I have. One moment while I go off camera. And I am back. I now have my extension cord. And I now have my wind wheel. Okay, so let's see what happens when I plug this in. This ought to be fun. That works. Works as advertised. It is a wind wheel. All right, so now let's take a look at this box. Let's see what we got in here. This ought to be fun. Okay, we have a separate bag here. This is separate. I don't know what this is. Let's see. Bag here. And looks like it has flaps, string, tie down, and sticks. Okay, so we'll set that to the side for now. We're just blowing up and then bringing it back down. We'll read the look at the instructions briefly. Program diagram installation, unfold the tent, spread it out and clean on the ground, zip up both sides of the product, tie the rope rope string, tie the air tube to the air blower outlet and air blow the ventilation is on the thing. Okay, when the tent is inflated, please fasten the tent stakes at the bottom of the wing. When the assembly is complete, please tie the windproof rope Windproof rope to a fixed object. We have a windproof rope, folks. Something new here in the shop that I never knew we had, a windproof rope. Store when it is dry to avoid dampness and mildew. I recommend to put the storage bag in and store them in a dry environment, which we can certainly do. Now I keep away from sharp objects and avoid scratching. Okay, all righty then. So let's see how this goes. We have a giant green bag. And in this giant green bag, we have a drawstring. And inside this green bag, we have a rolled up green thing. Okay, so we're gonna unroll it this way so that the tube can be on this side. Although let's see, does it show us which way it's rolled up? Um, probably not, that's okay. So we will just unroll it as we see it. Oh, okay, so let's see here. And so we will have to roll it up, compress it, and put it back in the bag. Okay, so this is, let's see, does that, can't tell based on how it's rolled if the tubes are on this side or not. So we'll just, we'll just take a guess. 
and guess that the tubes are on the other side. There's no way to know for sure until you unroll it, which is probably a good instruction that they should have provided in the box. But let's, let's look. It looks a lot like a tent compression row up setup like I am normally used to using on a tent, which is lay it out, flatten it out, fold it in half, fold it in half, and then roll it up on itself. Okay, is that a tube? That could be a tube, which means it's on the other side. So let's go ahead and grab it and flip it around this way. And flip it around this way. And let's see what happens when we do this. It's the top or the bottom. This looks like there's a tie down here. Tie down here. Okay, so that looks to be the bottom. Okay, okay, I think we've got something. Something's, oh, now there's a tube over here. Holy moly. Okay, so what is the yellow? If that's not a tie down, is that like a exhaust? Let me look at the instructions one more time because now I'm super confused. 17, power line inlet. Okay, so this was the back. That was the front. The way it unrolls is front to back. Now we know. This is just a power line inlet. So now I have to flip it around again, which is really the greatest thing ever. So when we fold it back up, it looks like, it looks like this side gets collapsed on top and then it gets folded again. So let's remember that when we go to deflate this monstrosity. And the amount of elapsed time since we opened the box is 13 minutes and 48 seconds, including turning it around twice needlessly. So let's see. Okay, so it's just the one outlet because of the, because of the, um, because of the single wind wheel. I love that. It's my favorite part of the whole thing. It's, the spray booth was free. All you're paying for is the patented wind wheel. All right, so what we're doing now is we are attaching the end of this to this. There are two black straps, which I'm assuming you use to tie this down. So we're probably at about 14 minutes now figuring this out. Now we will turn it on and see what it looks like. Now, hopefully it doesn't blow away because we're not staking it. We're just blowing it up just to see where we're at with this thing. It goes pretty good. The wind wheel is certainly doing its job. Started it at about 15 minutes. Let's see what we got going on here. Oh my gosh, Mr. Bouncy House, please inflate. Come on now, you can do it. Come on now, you can do it. Ah, I'm stuck. Okay, something's happening. It's it's halfway there. It's starting to look like something. Maybe it's just stuck. No. Let's see. Come on. Is it tied down properly? I think it is. Is there a? Uh, let's see if there's a. Maybe there's a, a deflation zipper that needs to be zipped up. I don't see a deflation zipper there. Oh, there's one here. I see one. There's a deflation zipper on the bottom. Let's zip that up. That probably would help. Oh, there you go. Okay, that's progress. Let's see if there's another one on the other side. 
Yep, there's one on this side too. So there's two deflation zippers on the bottom edge, opposite of the inflator. Oh, look, there we go. Oh, okay, 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 and okay. There was your problem right there, Mr. Wizard. So that's all it was, was the uh, two deflation zippers. That's all it needed. So yeah, this seems to go up pretty easy once you inflate that thing and use your wind wheel. Of course, this is, I think, one of the smaller ones. So there is, let's see on this side. Okay, so there's a, a clear plastic door. There's one filter on this side and one filter on this side. So you'd have in and out. Um, like a big black thing up there. So you probably would have to do air in, pushing positive pressure and then out. And um, yeah, so there you go. So that's the Vivor 13 by 10 by nine spray boost, inflatable. I think what everybody typically always says, they probably should have bought one that was bigger. So now let's pull the zippers and turn off the fan and see how quickly it deflates. Right now it is 10 minutes and 36 seconds. We'll see how fast we can, how fast we can get it back in the box. 10 minutes, 47. Okay, so we'll do it at that time. It's not a bouncy house. Okay, so that unzips that way. That unzips this way. No, it's for it's for painting pieces. Okay, so now we will unzip the two. We will unzip the two deflation zippers. I mean, it went down almost instantly, so that's encouraging. Let's keep the the parts that don't touch the ground on the inside. Keep the parts that don't touch the ground on the inside. Keep this part on the inside. Door in here. And we probably have to go from this side because the deflation zippers are over there. So, we'll push this down. We'll push this over. And very much like pulling up a tent, very much the same thing. Of course, there is actual air in here and not just trapped loose air. Okay. And very much like a tent, you just start rolling it tight from one side. This will help decompress those tubes. Not so bad. Once you get it started, all the air is going out the area it's supposed to go. Okay, it's obviously not as tight as it was rolled up when it first came out of the bag, but for a first time, not so bad. We'll just use the box rather than trying to shove it back in the bag for now. Okay, Let's bring the box over here. We can use that as a case for now. And that's rolled up in about six, seven minutes. Deflated and rolled up in about six or seven minutes. Perfect. So, with help, with an assistant, certainly we can get it in that bag pretty easily. But that's a demonstration of unboxing unpacking, inflating, troubleshooting, and deflating the Vibor inflatable paint booth with patented wind wheel from Parts Unknown, Project 21F here in the dark. It's on to the next adventure, wind wheel. Wind wheel. Wind wheel.